What's up guys, Justin here with TheFusionEssentials.com. So this is a different kind of video where I'm gonna kind of speed up a model that I did where I created a lightsaber from the Star Wars movies. And I kind of want to talk you through what I'm doing as I do it. Um, because it's sped up, there may be some things you don't necessarily see every little detail. If you have any questions, just leave them down in the comments and I'd be happy to, uh, happy to let you know how I did a certain thing or something like that. So let's go ahead and just jump into it. All right, so the first thing when you're modeling something like this is reference photos are definitely your friend. So the first thing I did is I went out and I found a blueprint view of this lightsaber and I brought it in using the insert button at the top of the page. And so when you bring that in, if you right click on the canvas that comes in on the left hand side of the page, you can then calibrate that by setting a distance. And when you set the distance, um, that basically allows you to set your image to scale. So what I did is I brought in this image and then I scaled it so that I could use the, use the dimensions that were on the sheet to make sure this is set up properly. And I will say this isn't exactly the same as the one in the image, but it's gonna be pretty close. And uh, so this is how you can kind of use a photo in order to do that. And so the first thing I'm doing is I'm just kind of roughing out the shape um, using sketches and uh, adding circles. So when I add the circles, I then take the extrude tool and I extrude them out um, so that I can um, so that I can create kind of the base cylinder and things like that. And so one thing that I did, and so I started off by uh, working in and starting to kind of rough out where the buttons were and all the different parts and pieces. And when you're doing something like this, you just have to take a little bit at a time. Um, most of the time, it doesn't really matter where you start. You just have to start somewhere. Um, I mean, you probably want to get the body of the lightsaber kind of roughed out before you do anything else. But from there, it's just a question of starting to add the different uh, parts and pieces and components. And so you, you can see how in this situation, um, I started with a construction plane and then I drew my circle on that and then I just drew circles and extruded them out and I used the bevel function um, contained within those tools in order to get the kind of a uh, offset that's in here um, where they're wider on one end and smaller on the other end. And so one thing I wish I had done a little bit better job of is I, I kept bringing these in as join pieces instead of their own bodies. The problem with adding these as join is it'll join with the object that you already have in here. So my recommendation would be that um, instead of using join, you model most of these as their own bodies. This button itself I'm actually going to make as a component because we're going to make a copy of it on the other side a little bit later. You can see how I use that, uh, that fillet function in order to round off the end of the button right there. So from there I kind of moved to the back side. And uh, one of the things that I modeled out was um, the little receiver here that this ring is going to go through. And again, it was a pretty simple thing. It's just a question of kind of roughing this out. And then once you rough this out, you extrude it into 3D. And so one thing I did a lot of is I used the mirror function in order to mirror edges across a line so that I didn't have to draw them twice. I only had to draw half of this and then I just used the mirror function contained inside of the sketch tools in order to do that. And then extruding this out is fairly simple. You just use the extrude tool again. And then from there, I modeled out the D-ring. And so the way that I modeled out the D-ring is I just modeled the flat version of this using a sketch. And then um, once I modeled out the flat version, I used the pipe along path tool in order to create a pipe around here. So all I had to do was draw the flat path and I used the three-point arc tool in order to do that. And uh, once we modeled that out, it's just a question of selecting that path and using that pipe tool. So, and... Um and so once I modeled... And so the pipe tool is really good for adding a pipe in here. And I didn't really worry too much about cutting holes for the pipe. Um, instead, I just made this as a pipe that kind of intersects with everything else. But you can see how that's really easy to do. And then once I, uh, once I did that, I could kind of fine position this body that we created using the move tool. So once you get that shape kind of roughed out, then um, you can use the pipe tool, or then you can use the move tool in order to place that. So, and then for the little, uh, the little screen 
screws that hold this on. I just modeled the faces of these. I didn't model a screw that goes all the way into the base of the lightsaber because I didn't really see the point. Um, so this is more of a 3D representation rather than a construction model. If it was something where I wanted to show you how to build this, then I probably would have modeled those screws out and shown them going into the base of the lightsaber. And so one thing that I started running into when modeling the back side is it really helps to have a version of your image that shows the bottom side on the face here. So, and that was something that I didn't have before. And so I was kind of guessing. And so what I did is I brought in a second version of this image and I stood it up and then I placed it so that it was aligned with the base of the lightsaber. So now I have an idea from one side of what this looks like and I also have an idea from the back of what this looks like. So if you can take your reference photos and place one standing up and then one uh, facing backwards, that can be really helpful. And that's gonna be a big deal when I get in here and start modeling out the button and some of the other parts and pieces that are in here. So, and I did a little bit of fine adjustment um, using the dimensions here, but uh, um, everything didn't quite line up exactly, like the button was a little bit off. And if I was really worried about it, I probably could have moved that up a little bit. But um, for this, for the case of this uh, particular, for this particular model, it didn't really matter that much. So and the nice thing about modeling this out as kind of a practice model is everything in here is pretty much, not completely, but pretty much extrudable, meaning you can just draw a profile and then extrude the profile out. Um, so you just draw this flat shape and uh, what I'm using is I'm using the, uh, the fillet function for the curves in order to adjust these curves and then I'm just going to trim off the extra in here using the trim tool and multiple times I trim the wrong edge in here that does happen so um but I use the trim tool in order to trim that off and then I just use this to create that curve and then from there I use the mirror function in order to mirror these edges so that I didn't have to draw them twice and then I just erase out the middle line and so now it's just a question of once I kind of rough out this uh, this object I just want to extrude it along the length of the base of this lightsaber and one thing that I didn't do that I probably could have done is I could have modeled the little gap where the screws are in the base that just would have been a question of um, using the extrude tool again um, but again for what we're doing right here I thought that it was kind of good enough so from there I just use the circular pattern tool in order to repeat these profiles around the circle so I just extruded them once and then I selected the bodies and then I extruded them out or I used the circular pattern tool in order to create a copy and so one thing I noticed when looking at images of this lightsaber is this button piece is actually held on by a thin piece of metal that goes all the way around this object so all I did in here, all I had to do was just uh, rough out the profile of, um, of this little uh, retainer piece here and then just draw another circle around the inside and then use the offset tool in order to offset that out. So what that gave me is that gave me the little piece that goes around the outside of the lightsaber and then all I had to do was just extrude it out. So it was very simple. I didn't even really have to bevel these edges off because these were kind of square metal pieces when they actually created this. So from this point, it just became a question of um, just extruding that out and then figuring out what the button assembly looked like and this was actually kind of a weird piece so I'd never really looked this closely at the lightsaber before but you, you've got kind of this piece that wraps around the middle of the lightsaber and then you've got these two little filler pieces on the side um, and then the button on the top and so for the button on the top all I did is I just extruded this out and then I just uh, modeled out these buttons as pieces that I could extrude in with the cut function in order to give them just a little bit of recess so I just didn't want this to be a flat piece I wanted this to have a little bit of recess um, for to make the buttons look like uh, they were recessed to make the buttons look like they were um, little individual like capacitor pieces or something like that um, in order to make this look a little bit more realistic but the rectangular pattern tool was very helpful here and then it was just a question of selecting everything and uh, once I selected everything I just use the extrude tool in cut mode in order to give this just a little bit of recess. So you can see there wasn't a re really a whole lot to that. Once I got kind of those little pieces roughed out, it was just a question of using that extrude tool. 
So then it was just kind of a question of coming in here and roughing out these little shapes. These were really interesting. Like I talked about, they're basically just little metal pieces that were in there from the prop maker. So because they're just little metal pieces, I wasn't really sure what to do with them. So I just created a uh, rectangle and then I kind of filleted it out a little bit. So I just uh, used the rectangle and then I extruded it out a little bit more and I kind of filleted the edge off so that it was rounded. But I really didn't know what to do with these because they were literally just little metal pieces that were put in there as spacers in the actual prop. So I just kind of made it a filler and then uh, I used that uh, I used that body that I created and I mirrored it across the middle using a mid-plane object and uh, I can talk about that in a future video but it's really helpful to be able to place in your own kind of planes in here if you want to. So at this point I started kind of toggling the uh, canvases that I brought in on and off so that I could see this model a little bit better. So there started to be a lot of stuff in here. So just knowing that you can toggle those on and off. Um, and at that point if you toggle those off then you don't get the x-ray mode anymore where you can see the image through there. That can be helpful so you just do that in the browser on the left hand side. But from there I just kind of use the, uh, I, I use the spline function in order to create a curve. Um, along this face with this little uh, clip and so it's just a little clip that just sits on the face of the lightsaber so there's nothing really special about it so I just tried to create as smooth of a curve as possible in here and uh, just give it kind of a clip look so I used uh, both the three-point arc and also the uh, spline function in here as well so and um, I mean it was pretty simple to do you just create the flat profile and then you just extrude it up and down making sure to use the symmetry function so that it uh, gets extruded up and down not just up so when you do that then you get this nice little piece right here so this button, best as I could tell, they seem to be the same button. So what I did is I just selected the body that I had in here and I made it a component. And so when I made it a component, that meant that, um, that meant that um, whenever I made a copy of it, if I flip that across the other side, when I finally add the little uh, the little knurling or whatever you want to call that on the button, that would adjust on both of these because they'd be copies of the same component. So I just used the circular pattern tool in order to create a, one copy 180 degrees from the other one. So from there, it was time to start working on this end piece. So this was actually surprisingly easy, at least creating this cutout. You just draw a spline across the face and then and uh, you just use the object that you create or the sketch you create to extrude this to remove the material. So all I did is I just closed this out and then from there I used the extrude tool in cut mode in order to remove that material. And I did struggle a fair amount with how to uh, shell this piece out, mostly because I was selecting the body of the lightsaber. But once I selected the face um, and I just used shell, or shell mode that way on just the face, then it was really easy to create just a shell of that curve. So that whole curve was actually a lot easier than I thought that it was going to be using those tools. And so from there, I actually went down the wrong road here for a little bit and I left this in because I wanted you to see that you definitely do make mistakes when you do this and uh, you just kind of have to roll with them. The nice thing about creating things as bodies is if you make a mistake and you don't cut anything or change anything, then uh, you can just kind of go the other direction with it. So you can see how I started by creating this as kind of a extrusion. It didn't really make any sense. And then I realized I could just look at this object from the front side instead and just draw the curve that way and extrude it all the way around. So I, I, I kind of left the body in but I just turned it off so that I didn't need to look at it anymore and then it was just a question of roughing out this circle. So this is basically like a little clip that goes through the body of the lightsaber and then goes around this opening right here. So I just drew a circle or uh, actually a three-point arc based on this and then I just used the offset function in sketch mode in order to offset set this in. So that body I didn't really need at all so I went ahead and turned that off and then I just selected these edges and I just offset them out by about a millimeter in order to create this little piece and then I just 
kind of filled this in and extruded it. So it's amazing the number of things you can create in here just by drawing a profile and extruding. And you can see how because we've got that front or that that uh, the two different reference images, this is really easy to both figure out the uh, the depth as well as the actual profile of this. And then I just use the fillet function in order to round these off. So that was also really easy to do. You just select those uh, individual edges and then use the fillet function in order to do that. And so from here, we were pretty close to being done. What I needed to do though is there's a little emitter piece that goes in the middle here that I needed to kind of fill out because otherwise this is just a, uh, this is just kind of an open cylinder and it doesn't really make a whole lot of sense. Oh, and there's also some clips on the front here. So I went ahead and modeled those out. So that was just a question of drawing a rectangular profile up here and then extruding that and then doing the same thing um, or drawing a circle on this face and extruding that out and then filleting it off to make it round. So again, really easy to do using the sketch functions inside of a Fusion 360. So just find the center point, extrude this out, and then um, you need to extrude it out twice because you've got a little button and also a little retainer, but then you can just use the fillet function in order to round this off. So really easy to do, not a big deal at all. Um, it, pretty much anybody should be able to do that. And then from there, I, I kind of played around with cutting some gaps in this face where the uh, where the actual little tabs would go through and I can't remember if I left them in or not I kind of determined that it didn't really matter from a long-term standpoint but then it was time I needed to come back in and add add all that knurling to this knob so I wanted to make this knob look rough um, you can see how the image has a little bit of texturing on the knob so all I did is I just drew a um, I just drew a profile and I used it in cut mode in order to cut out a little recess and then I use the circular pattern tool in order to uh, copy that around the edge and one thing to note and I didn't do this right the first time is under pattern type you want to select features not faces so if you select features and then you run this then this will copy that cut all the way around this face and I needed to adjust this so that I had the right number in here but you can see how this added that knurling no problem and you can see how because the other side was a component that also got transferred to the other side of this lightsaber and so for, for the central kind of emitter piece, I just drew a circle in here in join mode. And then I just drew another circle on the midpoint and I just extruded it out. And I used the fillet function in order to round that off as well. So um, I felt like that kind of represented pretty well the, uh, I felt like that represented pretty well the way the lightsaber prop actually looked. And then one other thing real quick is I drew a tangent construction plane so that I could draw a circle on here and then I used extrude mode in order to cut this in. So there's a little opening on this lightsaber where there's a couple adjustment buttons. So I, I went ahead and used the circle tool or the circle in extrude mode using the cut. And then I just drew a, a circumscribed polygon right here and just extruded that out. So again, really simple to add this. It's just a couple of extruded shapes, nothing special. And uh, they're pretty easy to add. And then from there, you can just use the move tool in copy mode in order to copy this across to create another copy. So just make sure when you do this, you create it as a body so that you can copy it rather than a join. Um, and so from there, I felt like we were pretty much done. There was a little bit of intersection that needed to happen with the buttons and the body of the lightsaber. But overall, I feel like this is a pretty good project for learning some of these sketch functions inside of Fusion 360. So that's where I'm going to end this video. Leave a comment below and let me know what you thought. Was this helpful to you? Is there anything you have questions on? I just love having that conversation with you guys. If you like this video, please remember to click that like button down below. If you're new around here, remember to click that subscribe button for new Fusion 360 content every week. As always, thank you so much for taking the time to watch this. I really appreciate it and I will catch you in the next video. Thanks guys.